you had this great bit you did on the show once where you talked about TiVo and it was when TiVo was right. fairly new First came and out. it was a line that I just loved. You'll obviously remember the bit much better than I can, but it was the problem with TiVo is that sometimes it would it would try to anticipate what you wanted. Based on what you've been watching and, and oh boy. Yeah, and it was this line and, and, and it was TiVo grabbing things that you didn't want and sometimes it's embarrassing and you just went, <laughs> Oh, TiVo, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like a little, little kid picking up a gun. There's a gun. No. TiVo, TiVo, no, TiVo. Yeah, it was. Yeah, because you would you would get, I had a TiVo, and I recorded a couple of Westerns, and I woke up the next day, and there were 30 shows on my TiVo, and I realized, oh, no, they all have horses in them. He thought, well, he, you he like thought. horses. TiVo is he. TiVo is a he. TiVo. No. Oh. no. <laughs> uh, but you like horses. <laughs> like he was so angry. But it, uh, it, It's so weird how that's the infancy of AI. And now if I walk into, like if my phone's in my pocket and I walk somewhere and then I go home and use my computer, there are ads for the places I visited yes. that day that are like now it's, it's just second nature. Okay. So this is something we should really just, creepy. I mean, because you have you have such a agile mind, and I'm thinking, <laughs> all right, Patton's going to know, he's going to understand. Because in my thinking, AI has been in the conversation like 35 or 36 on the list of things that we need to be worried yes. about. And then in the last three months, it went right to the top of the list. Yep. And now it's all anybody's talking about. Well, because it's all these people that, uh, again, like anything, I forget who said this, but any new invention has practical use, accidental harm, and then um, premeditated harm. So like mm -hmm. an ax, you can cut wood with it to build a fire and warm yourself. You can also drop it and cut your foot off, or you can murder someone with it. Right. But when the ax first showed up, people were like, this is great, what a great tool. And then it takes a while for people to then run the other scenario. So I'm sure that AI was looked at as, wow, what a cool thing, and it's a learning computer, and now they're just starting to realize the accidental part of it and then the malevolent part of it. But here's the other thing which uh, needs to enhance the analogy because the one way it doesn't hold is an ax doesn't get smarter. Right. This is, so in the time that you yes. and I are talking about AI, yes, it's listening to us talking. It, exactly. And it's anticipating things and it's growing and you think, are we, sometimes I think, am I like three months away from there being a really accurate porno that I'm in. <laughs> and I'm only saying this because I did some huh. porno and I'm trying to or, cover <laughs> I'm trying to cover my tracks. You're trying to put, plant a seed <laughs> that it's a deep fake. Well, it's a total deep I fake. I mentioned it on my podcast <laughs> with Patton. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Here's something that's gonna be really weird. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I listen to a lot of podcasts and there have been some podcasts where they warn about AI and they've had experts on. So in a year from now, we'll suddenly certain podcasts that have been warning about AI suddenly be gone or delete. Like if that starts happening, right. then yeah, these guys were right. That's that Rocco's Basilisk thing that talks about if you are anywhere on record at any time in human history against AI, there will be a culling and that like singularity and Skynet and all that. Well, so, you know, oh, what's dear. interesting is that in the yeah. old, but in the no, old- I'm not saying that I believe that. I'm just No, right, no, but in right, the old yeah. science fiction, it was the computer actually comes to life. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it- <laughs> A, a Macintosh comes through the wall and starts <laughs> punching you with its buttons. And you're like, okay, that's stupid. Right. But um, but the idea that it would just create confusion was exactly. something was something yeah. that I never anticipated, which is suddenly, you know, because think of all the thousands of hours of footage there are of you, Patton, and then it can yeah. it can know your voice, it can create different images, and suddenly, hey, there's footage here of Patton committing yeah. this horrible crime. Let's exactly. get him. Yeah, there's all these weird, um, and also it could be, what I'm worried about is a computer uh, or an AI that does something that it thinks is being benign. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you, let's say you were to task it to solve world hunger and in a benign way, it would go, well, one way to solve world hunger is to get rid of this chunk of the population right. and then other people will have enough to eat. Like, and right. thinking, what a good job I'm doing right now. Like it, thinking it's running its own programming. Right. The one scary thing I've heard, and it was a guy trying to reassure me was this is how, how into the weeds we are. I, I was talking to a guy that, that 
that works with AI and, and does computer systems like, you know, the ones that regulate the water and the sure. power grid. And I said, well, you know, I read this review of a, there's a book by Ted Koppel called Blackout about what happens when the grid goes down, mm -hmm. and what skills you're going to need. And it just, I'm worried because I don't really have any practical skills. And then he said to reassure me, he goes, oh, we're way past the point of being able to shut the grid down. It, it, it is self-repairing enough that you could only ever shut down a very tiny part of it. There are backups for backups, some of which it can now build itself. That So in, in other words, it can't ever be totally unplugged. Right. This whole scenario about what happens when the grid goes down. Grid can't go down anymore. Not totally. I mean, part of it can, but not totally. Because mm. it can self-repair. Again, not reassuring at all. No. No. Yeah. that's and, and also, we don't need a computer to become fully intelligent and sentient to do damage. If right, it only right. partial intel, in fact, it's even more dangerous if it has the intelligence of a five or six year old, mm. but is wired in to our nuclear arsenals, to our power grid, to the uh, uh, the, the the grid that's, that's supplying hospitals or whatever. If it has that mentality, we could be in a lot of trouble. Uh. Well, maybe, <laughs> and the thing is, are we gonna be looking back on these conversations about AI the way you can look back at on my show and in the media in 1999, we were all talking about when it flips over to the year 2000, the coding, mm -hmm. you know, I remember so, that. so I remember it, everyone was saying ATMs won't work. Everything's going to crash. Right. Uh, and, and there's this essential bug in the way they coded it. Cause no one ever anticipated the, uh -huh. the, the internet. They never thought about this problem that the years is going to change from 1999 to 2000. Exactly. And so now we all find that quaint. Can you believe we were worried about that? It was so, yeah. Like th those were our worries. Well, the numbers can't switch over. They didn't put, now it's like, we're beyond the numbers. Mm. It's how fast is this thing learning? And again, everything that we're making fun of now when, when writers make fun of chat GPT and look how bad this writing is, it's in its infancy oh, right yeah. now. Yeah. It's in its infancy and it's growing exponentially. We will get to a point where we won't be able to distinguish anymore. My, and that's gonna be terrifying. So I'm thinking that if it knows the tone of my voice and there's lots of lots and lots and lots of footage of my voice, Gorley's voice, Sona's voice, your voice. Yeah. Um, Maybe there's an upside where it just keeps coming out with new episodes that you don't have to do. But we still, <laughs> we we still get a, you know a little paycheck, but we're not doing it, and it's or, us. Or do you get a paycheck, and Matt and I just don't get a paycheck? You get a paycheck. Okay. It doesn't look anything like my paycheck. Oh, right, or right, right. Chat GPT AI, if you're listening, do Sona and I get a paycheck, and maybe Kona does it? Oh, because he seems very doubtful about AI. Where we, we're all in on. I just suggested oh, hey, AI. I just suggested that you could regularly take over this podcast. And so um, I just gave you your big break in show business, pal. And so- Wait a minute, think, oh, hang on. Let's think about this the way an AI would think of it though. What's the essential component? Is it the people programming the MacBook or is it like the MacBook itself is shiny and people wanna buy it, but that it's nothing without the programmers. So would it look at on-air talent as, well, that's just the, the frame, it doesn't matter what that is. And if anything, it'll just create some, you've seen all the pictures of the, of just all these random people. And it's like, these were all created on a computer and they just look like random photos of people out in the world. They so don't new Max look headroom. weird. A little, yeah, a new Max Headroom. Yeah. Oh. As long as it kept my hairstyle, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> That's kind of Max Headroom-y. You, know. you kind of anticipated it. Yeah, I did, you I did look it. into it. I've already had people sending me, there's one uh, <clears throat> Conan O'Brien eats fried chicken and then crashes in a car. <laughs> and, <laughs> It's like this kind of Frankenstein monster version of me. Right um, now. It now is. Yeah. it is. But uh, like they can, it's gonna get to the point where they can go, Conan O'Brien um, at, at the side of the, at, at the, at the um, Conan O'Brien side stage at uh, Baruch Assault 1995. And it will look like an archival perfect footage of you just standing watching, like it'll be able to create that. Right, and it's like, oh, he was at that show. Here's a photo, like, you know. Right, and look, some of the some of the deep fakes, like I, you, I've seen on Instagram, people that put like Arnold Schwarzenegger's face on people, and some of them are kind of goofy. And there's one, it was um, the animals singing "House of the Rising Sun." They put mm -hmm. his face on that broadcast from the '60s, and I could not. It looked like a young Arnold singing "House of the Rising Sun." 
for all I could tell, there was no seams, nothing. For every janky one, for every 10 janky ones, there's one where you're like, oh, that'll be the one they build on to get to the next level of realism. Well, then you start really to- Really scary. Real, I mean, I've seen already some photos that are completely AI, and you think, why would someone hire a supermodel again? Exactly. The, the, they're stunning. These These photos that they put out are absolutely stunning, and this almost makes me happy that I didn't become a supermodel. Oh. That I took oh. the left <laughs> path, not the right path. Right. I thought you chose because not yeah. to be a superman. I chose. Okay. Um, but I, but I, but why? Although, why? okay, here's here's the thing though. Last night I got to go to the premiere of um, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Oh, yeah, I have that kind of pull. So, um, and Spider Man Into the Spider Verse is so over the top cartoony that it actually is. It, it connects even more emotionally, whereas a lot of motion capture and a lot of making it look very human, for some reason you don't link to it, but because these are humans creating yes. through art, the way that humans act and talk to each other, it was weird. We, there were there are scenes where I was almost crying, but it's so emotional, even though these are very stylized cartoons, but they actually connect. So maybe there will always need to be some kind of human element behind it. However, um, the, but I also mean there doesn't need to be that many humans behind it. There won't be that many jobs left. And they can just harvest our brains in jars anyway, so we're, <laughs> yeah. we're yeah. fucked. Whatever. I'm a lot more optimistic. I don't know. I, I just don't think they could, I don't think, I don't know, maybe I'm being just naive, but I just don't think machines can get like human nuance the way humans can. Like a machine's never going to write <sighs> succession. It's never going to write friends no, or could, the office could, no don't could, you think there'll be a merger at some point though and that's just evolution happening with a, a natural force that then is the next step and but even the people that are saying well what if chat gpt is just there to supplement your writing like if you can't think of a good transition chat gpt will spit out 20 but it's like i want i still want the humanity of like there are scenes in jaws they don't quite end right. Mm -hmm. um, it's still a brilliant movie because it's Steven Spielberg and it's his. It's a young guy making a movie and you feel it happening. Yeah. And you're drawn in. And if he had had like, well, maybe transition this way, here's five other options. To, like, it wouldn't be the movie that it is. Well, yeah. I think this is this is something that I can think can lead us back into our various crafts, which is. You mean back into hope? Lead us yeah. back into some kind of hope? <laughs> I heard you talk about this once before, and we haven't had a chance to talk about it, but how great limits are. Yeah, that's why, I mean, again, I, I think a lot of, a lot of uh, you, should, you should be able to say absolutely anything you want. In con no, no, no. Have some restrictions there so you can find clever ways around them, because then that makes what you're doing more shocking. If there's no limits, then nothing's shocking and nothing's startling. But, but when you know that there are certain things, how do you get around that? Yeah, you're right. And same with music and same with movie. Look, if you if you're shooting a movie, but you can just do it all on a computer and you can create any landscape that you want, then there doesn't have it's not that urgency of like we've got a day on this location and this actor's having a nervous breakdown and there's a cloud over the sun. How do we make this work? What do we do? We got to and, and so many great memorable moments in movies came because stuff wasn't working. Well, it's like, it's the classic thing you said in Jaws, uh, you mentioned Jaws and the shark, Bruce, wasn't working yeah. correctly. So you don't see the shark nearly as much as they wanted you to see it for a lot of the movie. That turns out to be brilliant. It's it makes what the movie makes the terrifying. movie, it's terrifying because you don't really get a good look at this thing. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's to this day when I watch that movie, it's electrifying. Yeah. But had, uh, greater technology been around or more money, mm -hmm. it would have ruined it. It would have ruined the movie. That's why the the first Evil Dead movie, I read this interview with Sam Raimi, where it's like, we want this evil force to be floating through the woods and you see it from the evil force's point of view. And he goes, Here's, here was our process to, to get that effect. How would you do that? Well, uh, you build an anti-gravity disc. Well, there aren't any anti-gravity discs. What's the next thing we can do? We could get a huge board and uh, fasten the camera to the middle of the board so it wobbles a little bit. It was, let's do that. So they're literally running through the woods with this wobbly board and it created this weird look that you'd never seen on camera before. Right. And it was teenagers out in the Midwest with their wobbly piece of wood basically creating a new thing in cinema that's now used all the time, but it was so, it's so eerie watching that first film because it's so handmade that it actually feels real. But that's why I agree with you, Sona. I have hope because I do think that human creativity is this 
crazy, unyielding force. People just yes. have to. Now, there are a lot of things that I would worry about, but mm-hmm. um, I'm not that worried about me being in a porno. Um, <laughs> I am. I, I, I'm I really am. worried I about me being are. in a porno. For this whole room, yeah. we are very worried about <laughs> yeah. that. I'm worried. I'm going to have to see it. Very worried. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a cross between me and John yeah. Tesh. Oh, just really oh going at it. God. Um, 